Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I am a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we interview recent first class graduate Liz Hayden about her experience in getting involved whilst at university. Liz was recently awarded runner-up for Inspirational Student of the Year at the Derby Union of Student Education Awards, and she spent her time getting involved to develop herself and to support others through going on a placement and being a key member of the Business Society Committee. So hello Liz and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast. Today we're going to be talking all about how you can actually develop your skills and get the most out of your time at university by actually getting experience outside of your study. And we're going to be talking to Liz today about how you can do that by, through volunteering and also by taking time on a placement year. So hello Liz, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi Alex, um, yeah so I am Liz Hayden and I've just finished my degree in accounting and finance at the university and I did it with a placement year at Deloitte. Um, so about halfway through my second year, I became treasurer of the Accounting and Finance Society, and I did that all the way through until the end of my placement, and then I became treasurer of the Business Society. So I didn't really get involved in anything from like the first year and a half at my at the university, um, and then I kind of just thought, I wanna do a bit more, I wanna get involved and do more than just kind of get my degree, so yeah. I got involved a bit more. Sounds exactly like me. I did nothing in my first year, and then in my second year, I started thinking, actually, time's going to finish at university, and I need to get myself as employable as possible. Uh, I don't know if you felt the same way in terms of employability, or was there another reason behind you wanting to get involved and do more? Yeah, there was the employability aspect. I knew I always wanted to do placement to kind of be more employable and potentially get like the graduate job offer from it. Um, but I also was surrounded by kind of people that were doing more. So I know you had Tyra on the podcast mm. and I lived with Tyra during my first and second year and kind of seeing everything that she was doing and getting involved with kind of gave me the inspiration to do more and get out of my comfort zone a bit. Sounds good. And that's exactly what we'd encourage any student to do is to try and get out of your comfort zone to get experience and then to see how that can help him. We'll talk later on about the benefits and how each one placement and also volunteering has helped you. So now I guess we'll talk about placement. So first of all, we've mentioned the word placement. What is meant by that word? So it's a year between your second and third year of university where you kind of just go out into the world of work you get your experience in kind of a relevant industry um, and you see whether you, it is something that you actually want to do. Um, you get contacts and you can network with the people. You get an experience of the work and you build your skills up and it massively helps with your final year as well because you can link things back to the world of work and you can actually apply what you're learning. Sounds amazing. And like a big decision to make first of all to choose to go to placement but it also sounds like you can get a lot out of it in terms of like you said the networks uh the experience uh potentially even you might even decide actually this is the field i want to go into or even this is the company i want to go into or the opposite that you don't that's what i got from doing work experience that maybe i don't want to go into this area i want to do something else instead did you feel like uh, going on placement helped you to make that uh, decision about whether you wanted to stay in the area or not yeah, massively. I mean, so I initially applied, um, so I did it at Deloitte, and I initially applied for their public audit, um, but they filled all of those roles and they offered me uh, a placement they had actually never done before, which was in their pensions auditing department. And I was kind of a bit unsure kind of whether to take it because I knew it was Deloitte, but I didn't know a thing about auditing pension schemes. And then I was just like, okay, right, let's go for it. Let's see what happens. And if I like it, then I like it. And I'll get experience of the company and things. So I went for it and you got to see the whole company and realize kind of more about it. And then I, was, I realized that I liked it and I could do it. So it was an unexpected area that I would never have considered going into before that I then 
learn about and will be doing my graduate job for. That's amazing. So it broadened your horizons and then even set up your future just by that yeah. placement. Wow. So you chose to go on placement then. You've explained a bit about why you went on placement. Was, any, was there any other reasons why you went on placement other than the ones that you've had so far? Kind of just to develop more skills and get that experience and just try and kind of secure the graduate job offer. Was it an easy decision to make to decide to go on to placement? Yeah. So for me, I when I initially applied to the university via like UCAS, I applied to the placement course. Mm. So I kind of always had it in my head that I wanted to do a placement year. Fair enough then. Would it, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but would it be possible for a student to do a placement if, even if they hadn't gone that course? Yes. So yeah. you can switch. That sounds quite cool. Uh, so there are options out there then. Um, so you said you went on this placement, it went well, and now you've chosen to go into the area. Uh, how did you actually find day-to-day -day doing the placement? Was it a bit different? Yeah, so initially it was quite a shock because going from university, you know, you've got 12 hours a week at uni and outside of it, you kind of just do what you want. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you're going into like a nine to half five job where you're concentrating solidly for those hours. But you get used to it, and then it was it's actually a really enjoyable experience if you like what you're doing. And, and I, I had a great team, so it was always nice to be in the office. Yeah, it sounds like really good. And the first few days, of course, they're going to be difficult, um, especially because you said you didn't know this area at all. On that point, though, if you don't know something, then a really good option is just to throw yourself in there and learn and... And yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So I've just realised um, something I didn't actually ask you was when you first got this placement, how did you go about getting it and was it difficult for you to obtain? Yeah, so I did something differently to kind of other people. So some people just apply to as many as they can and hope that they get one of them. Whereas I decided to try and apply to a few and put a lot of effort into those sure like the smaller number of applications um so I think I applied to maybe five or six mm. um and I took kind of I got a few to the through to the final stages of a, quite a few of them but you then take the rejection and the feedback from that to improve your other applications so you're constantly learning from it and I did that and I got down to Deloitte and another company as my last two and then I heard back that I hadn't got through for the other one. So it was all hanging up on yeah. Deloitte. And I was nervous. I was like, oh no, I can't, like, there's no way I've got it because I've been rejected by like all of the smaller companies. So I was like, there's no way that I've been accepted and I've got a placement for the number one professional services firm in the world. Like, it's just not happening. And then like, I got the phone call through and I was very shocked that, and I was just like, oh, okay, maybe I did. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's it's that's really interesting because uh, there's a risk attached to the different strategies. I guess you could yeah. uh, choose to go for lots and hope for the best without having the time to probably target and learn, or you could go for little. I would prefer the option that you do, which is apply for a few or target properly. That's the way I always do it. But when there's time pressure in terms of like if you don't get this one, then you might not get on a placement. Then that's different. Uh, would, what would you have done if you hadn't got that placement offer? Would you just continue studying normally? Um, I think, so at that point, it was about February or March, um, so there was still time. I know um, Sheena, who works in kind of like the careers team and is one of the lecturers on like HR modules and things, um, she was the placement support, so she was very supportive in getting placements, and she would literally be scouring the internet, finding placement opportunities and sending them out to students. Um, and she always said, don't stop looking until the last minute. So one of the key like skills and things to have when applying for placements and just jobs and things in general is resilience and you just have to keep going. So even though it might kind of, you might get knocked down a bit after like rejection, rejection, rejection. If you keep going, you will find the role that you want. So just keep applying until the last minute. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's all about taking those rejections in a positive way. I know it hurts when you get rejected. I felt it, and it feels like you're worthless, and they're never gonna, you're never gonna get a job if these people didn't want you. But 
it's probably just luck and it's probably just the fact that there's one more person out there or so on or you didn't do, there's a small factor in that decision and you got rejected by what was it five different organizations and then the biggest one picked you so yeah it's probably a good thing for you if that's what you wanted because you've actually got that department that you now want to work in your new job afterwards so probably these other rejections weren't necessarily a bad thing either it's just part of the journey that you went on yeah definitely and you just just learn from it just flip projections into a positive thing that get the feedback and you go okay i can focus on these points that they've brought up and they've raised and you can improve and make your next application even better yeah definitely it's all about reflecting on that and using that skill of reflection and also perseverance to keep going through the challenges that you've had um so with your placement you've completed it now Thinking back on it, was there anything that you would have done differently if you were, if you were to start it again now? Um, I think maybe at the start, just kind of talk more to the other new joiners and try and like make it a proper community and things. Like being in pensions, I was the only placement that joined the pensions team, and there was one graduate. Whereas kind of the public and private auditing teams there were like 20 something other new joiners joining those. So they were all kind of in their area of the office. So maybe make more of an effort to kind of stay in touch with them. Um, because having a support network is really key. Mm. Um, and having kind of all of those people around you that have the same kind of work ethic and same mindset. And um, it really benefits you. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just valuable advice is to, to give to people is just talk to other people, make connections, especially people at the same stage as you, because they could help you with your struggles. You could talk to them openly um, and they might have the similar struggles or advice and such for helping you. It's almost as beneficial as having a mentor, I think, who is being there and done it, who can give you advice. But someone who's struggling with you, I think that's really good. And they're probably good, it's really, a really good way of making friendships too. Yeah. Because you make the friendships through the through through the support and help you get through the struggle. I've got two more questions about placement. Uh, the first one is, um, how did you think that placement helped you in developing your skills? So through placement, I was put in a lot of kind of different scenarios. So I had COVID impact halfway through my placement. Mm. So like we were in the office every day, or like occasionally visiting clients site. Um, and then all of a sudden it was working from home. So commute, like all of the skills, just even if you had developed them, when it came to working from home, you developed them even more. You were kind of forced to, mm. because if you didn't have good organization, good time management, good communication, then the work just wasn't going to get done. So in auditing you have like a junior on the file which is the one that does like the majority of the work and then you've got like the managers that review it and I was one of the juniors so if you don't communicate with your manager how much work you've got done and when things are ready for review that delays the timing and you might not meet the deadline that the client had given you mm. so it can all throw things off if you're not organized etc so having those skills is extremely important and it did kind of force you to just develop them and figure out how to become more organized and set a planner up and set reminders on your phone and just plan your days out to make sure that you've got everything done. I think it's really interesting because if you think about it, placement itself forces you to develop skills because you're in pressure to, you're in situations where there are some pressures for you to develop those. So you've now got deadlines, you've now got jobs and managers and things like that for the period that you're on placement and then COVID as well and the fact that you're working from home then added to that um, forced development uh, which is really useful in terms of skills development obviously probably not the most ideal situation to be in but in terms of helping you develop your skills I think everyone has developed a lot because of the changes that we've had to face um, but placement even without a world where there's COVID probably forces you to um, develop those skills too I don't know if you'd agree with that just generally yeah, definitely. I mean, you're doing completely different work to what you're used to. Like at university, it's academic writing, it's research, it's that kind of thing. It's completing coursework. Where in the world of work, it's different and you've got managers chasing you to get things done. You have other things. You could have multiple managers that you're working for 
that each one you should do different tasks. So you've got to prioritize and things. So it's it's definitely it's different to studying and you do have to adapt and it is like you do get thrown in the deep end, but you just ask questions, keep learning and keep improving and developing your skills. So I've actually got another two questions in my head that I've just thought of. And um, the first of those is, uh, do you have any advice for students who are actually on placement um, or who are going to do placement? Yeah, so keep asking questions. That was one of the main ones that I learned is, I know so many people say it is no question is a stupid question. And I genuinely think that because it shows that you're willing to learn and the more questions you ask, as long as you're not repeating the same question every week. So you're not like, so they know that you're not actually taking on board the information. Um, just ask like different questions. Remember what the answers are that they've told you and just keep learning that way. Um, and it's one of the best ways to kind of improve and grow and learn um, and make contacts, stay in touch, send your colleagues connection requests on LinkedIn and things and just use them. I know that sounds slightly strange, but you never know when you'll need those contacts again in the future. If you do, they could go off and get a job at your dream company and you could use them as kind of, oh, like, how did you get the job? How did you apply to it? What advice have you got? So you could use them to kind of get into that company if you wanted to. So the more connections you've got, the better. Yeah, I think they're both really valuable pieces of advice. Um, the first one specifically about asking questions whilst you're there. Like I said, no such thing as a stupid question. But actually, what is even stupider is not asking that question. Because then if you're three months into your placement and you're trying to say, how do I submit, uh, I don't know, how do I submit my case? Or how do I actually email the clients and things like that? Like, that's you will look even worse if you don't know that. And so you just got, you got to ask. And even if you haven't asked a question yet, if you're in placement, it's been three months now and you've not asked a stupid question, well, what's stupider? Not asking a question after three months or not asking a question after six months or seven months or eight months and so on. Yeah. Also, um, if you're sat there and you don't know how to do a piece of work, instead of just sitting, you'll be sat there for hours if you don't ask the question, how do I do this? Because you just won't know. And then if you do it wrong and send it off to your manager for review, then they're just going to send it back and get you to redo it. And then they're going to be like, okay, you spent four hours on this and it's completely wrong. So you've just wasted four hours when you could have just asked a quick question and we could have shown you how to do it. So that saved like your time it saved your manager's time from reviewing it un like unnecessarily and it just works better yeah. for everyone so that all relates to the skill of being bold and being willing to in that moment just ask that question and it's so beneficial it's so beneficial both your time at university and also your time on placement i'm sure as well and like thinking about that in terms of being beneficial to your time at university has your placement helped you because you've now completed your third year at university do you think completing that placement has helped you actually achieve what you wanted to in your third year definitely so it it kind of gives a reference point to things that you're learning so when learning stuff about auditing and things and accounts in my final year I could relate that back to when I was looking at those things on placement and having that kind of reference point it really helps kind of keep information right in your head and you learn things and you take things on more and you can remember things more easily because you can just go oh yeah that relates to what I did a few months ago on placement year um, so something we were learning were international like accounting standards um, and one specifically we covered was IAS 19 which is kind of about like post-employment benefits which is pension schemes and that is literally what I spent my placement doing. So even if it was just kind of a session in the module, I was able to go, OK, this is what I did on placement. And that was really useful. And it stuck in my head. So as well as knowledge, do you think it's helped you in? Do you think the skills that you developed helped you in any way? Oh, massively. My confidence increased so much. Um like I mentioned earlier, I was on the committee for the business society and the president headhunted me um, because he knew that we had both been on placement and I studied accounting and finance. So he thought I would fit quite well into the treasurer role. 
Um, and I was umming and ahhing kind of about whether to take it because I didn't really know him. I'd met him once. I'd never met the secretary before, never even talked to her. And then I was just, I kind of thought to myself, you know, why not? Why not put yourself out there? You're not going to grow and develop if you're staying within your comfort zone or doing nothing. Hmm. There's the saying kind of beyond the comfort zone is the growth zone. And I do agree with that. So sitting there and doing nothing, you're not going to develop any of your skills. But if you just get out and do something, then you will. So kind of accepting the role as treasurer of the business society is actually one of like the best things I think I've ever done. Um, it's made my university experience so much more enjoyable um, and also opened me up to kind of even more contacts and business students and things that are all kind of extremely hardworking. And that's just an, another support network now that I have. I agree. And I think some of the best decisions that I made were ones that were like, I was opening and ahhing about. Um, in particular, um, during society as well, like you did, um, those decisions were difficult at the time, but actually were amazing for my student experience, and just like yours. And actually, that's what I'd like to talk to you about next, which is actually about getting involved in volunteering alongside your studies. So we talked about placements, and now I'd like to talk to you about your time in the business society as well as you're also volunteering elsewhere. So first of all, you've just identified how you volunteered. So would you like to just summarise the different types of volunteer experience you've had whilst you were a student? Yes. So um, I was treasurer of the Accounting and Finance Society for a year and a bit. And then I was treasurer of the Business Society for my final year. The award-winning Business Society as well. Was What was it, Society of the Year and Most Charitable Society of the Year? Yeah. So we um, we won Academic Society of the Year, Most Charitable Society and and Society of the Year. And I think we were also nominated for Best Committee. So it was very, um, it was a very good night. <laughs> a, a society that won all that sweep the awards, um, amazing. And so yeah, as part of that society, the fact that you got headhunted and so on probably was because you're part of a good committee. But um, that's a way of volunteering that you can do as a student, um, which is basically if you're part of a society to help other students or to run events for the people on your course. Um, I was part of the debating and speaking society when I was a student. I was the treasurer of that society, just like you were the treasurer of, of the business society and also the accounting and finance society. So what I'd like to discuss first, though, before we get delve into those particular experiences, is the benefits of volunteering generally and how it's helped both of us. Um, so first of all, how do you think you've benefited from being involved within societies and volunteering? Um, again, it's something that develops your skills so being on a committee for example is teamwork and again like communication and things like you're planning events and things and you're talking every week and just having that team and getting involved in things you're just constantly developing your skills and growing mm. especially i think for you you said that you organized a, an event every week on your linkedin uh, for the business society it must just give you things to do and be fun and also help you to just develop so much. Um, that's what I feel like from me doing youth work, I, which is very similar to doing events weekly. You just, you've got something to look forward to and you're developing. Do, would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. So we, we started off with the aim of doing an event every week of the academic term. Um, so that we actually developed kind of our planning skills with that as well. Whereas we, we met up on, well, virtually um, in kind of the summertime before university had even started for the term and planned out kind of roughly what events we would do each week. So we kind of roughly knew what we were doing. And it was that kind of pre-planning and thought that made it a lot easier to kind of manage it because all three of us were in our final year. So mm. having the society and our final year workload and some of the other committee members had other things going on as well. Um, managing all of that just kind of, again, forced you to develop your skills. And I'm sure it looks it'll look amazing on your CV as well. Definitely, yeah. Um, all that skills. And I know from having gone to job interviews after graduating, I felt like I mentioned my volunteering at almost every interview. Actually, no. I would be willing to put on record that I've mentioned volunteering at every interview. 
Um, and it's so much nicer to have that experience to rely on. So when people ask you a question, rather than saying, oh, I did group work as part of my degree, which is what every student who attends that interview will be able to say, you can say, I did group work because it's a society and as a team of volunteers, we came together to run events for other people on, on our courses and other courses in our areas. And that was amazing. Yeah, it, may, it definitely makes you stand out. Kind of when applying to jobs, it's usually kind of a given that you've got a degree. Like one of the requirements is a degree, but to st you stand out if you've got the additional kind of experience and additional kind of activities that you've done while studying and it'll capture their attention and definitely you'll be one of the candidates that they remember. Yeah, it's a bit unique as well because often the volunteering is so diverse and it's so personal as well. So the things you've done as the business society and so on are things that as a committee you've all come up with as your own ideas and it's not that someone else has given you that idea or you may have had that idea given to you but you've executed it and you've come up with it as a team and you've planned it and it's just a really, really good way to get skills is by being involved in the society committee and to develop and often in ways that you can't do otherwise because imagine if you wanted to get paid and properly as a student where you were project managing, coming up with ideas, basically being a CEO of a small group and executing all that and working as a team of people who are like strategic managers. That's what it is. And that's on your CV when you graduate as a student. Yeah, definitely. And especially, I mean, we were, I want to say lucky, but I know that we put the work in um but to like to be recognized and have those awards and that just boosts it even more to be to be able to say we were like I was on the committee for an award-winning society is just it just kind of takes it to the next level as well mm. and there is lots of recognition out there as well isn't there there's the uh, futures award isn't there yes so the futures award is run by the careers team at the university um, and it's split into three stages so you've got bronze silver and gold and it's any extracurricular activities that you do. Um, so at each level, there's an hour requirement that you have to meet. Um, and then you do a couple of extra kind of attending some webinars and things or doing a training session. And you write a little, kind of, I think the first one's like 500 words, um, a little reflect, like reflective piece to just kind of think about how you developed your skills by doing the extracurricular activities or like be it, being on a committee, be it your part-time job while you're studying, uh, I think even placement year counts. So I didn't know that placement year counted until I had already done my bronze and silver level. Mm. And I thought that I wouldn't be able to achieve gold because I think it's, it's over a hundred and something hours. And then I found out that placement year counted. So I suddenly had over a thousand hours that I just <laughs> hadn't counted yet. <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, I can get my gold. Um, but yeah, that's also really useful. And it shows employers that you haven't just done your degree. You have gone above and beyond and done things outside of studying as well. And it's a way of accrediting that volunteering. Because often, and I know especially the volunteering that I do, there's no way of backing up other than showing photos and videos and references and quotes from people who've attended and benefited. But having the university say, look, this is something that's been done. We accredit this. is a really good way to make it from this experience that's a bit informal to something that's really good and i'll link just links to how students can get involved in the futures award in the description of the youtube version of this podcast so having that futures award as something do you think it ha having the futures award as potential recognition as also the other awards that are available at the union do you think they helped motivate you to, towards volunteering or was it toward was the other factors that helped to motivate you towards volunteering so I just kind of, I found the awards after I started the volunteering, mm. but it's definitely once you start it, you are motivated to do more. So before I knew about placement year, like counting towards the actual award, I was motivated to put more time into the volunteering to get the next stage of the award. Um, so it definitely kind of does motivate you to do more and to get involved. Mm. And there's probably other motivators out there as well as, as the starting ones. The fact that is your activities that you're doing are helping other people. 
um, societies I know I found when I was a first year student, the fact that they existed helped me to make connections and then running those societies helped the first years to get ingrained into the universities, for example, uh, and so on. Yeah, I mean, so obviously we had COVID for the whole of this year, so it's all been online and things. And it was actually kind of really rewarding to provide a little space. And we created a little community among like, and within the business society where people could just kind of come and escape kind of the reality of COVID. So we we did a lot more socials this year than we kind of, than the business society has done previous years because we wanted to kind of just provide an opportunity to, for people to chat and just relax a little bit rather than just bombard them with like guest speakers and academic events. Um, and it's actually like, we're really good friends now. We've been socializing and things and we've met up a few times now that COVID allows it. Um, and it's actually really great, but it's really, it's been really rewarding to kind of see people grow because of the events and things that you've put on and just seeing them make friends and things and expand their network. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I did something similar with the um, the Pierce's Saloon scheme uh, when that was first launched at the university and helping people through that and seeing people grow and make friends because of it and make connections with different years. That was so nice. And the same with the other volunteer. And there's a lot of benefit from helping, from knowing that your actions are helping more than just yourself but then even then still doing it it helps you because of the mental health aspect especially in the pandemic it probably helps combat your own loneliness among other things so yeah i think um, volunteering is always a plus if you can fit it in um and if you can find an opportunity that's relevant to you so i guess that's the final question i've got for volunteering except for what advice you give to students who want to volunteer um how can students find volunteering opportunities so Google is your friend. <laughs> um, it will help you. You can just search up volunteering. Um, but also the careers team, I believe, do have a list of kind of volunteering opportunities that are available. Um, and if I think when COVID allows, you can just pop into the atrium and find the careers team. And I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help or just contact them via email and things. Mm. And I believe the list is probably somewhere on their website as well. Yeah. They've got a list of voluntary opportunities on their website as well that they advertise. Uh, the, most of those are around Derby. However, um, there are other organisations around the areas if you just type in the area that you live in and volunteering. Um, or even you could make your own voluntary opportunities. Uh, you could either make your own society or you could um, you could make your own scheme if you really wanted to. Or you could uh, make your own organisation or join other people who are. So there's lots of ways of finding volunteering. I know that when I um when I was younger, I had to volunteer for my TV, and I was like, I just felt it's such a massive barrier. I was like, how am I going to find a volunteering? Opportunity? How are they going to want me? People won't want me to volunteer. As someone who runs an organisation now, if you want to volunteer and you're willing to go through the checks and balances that we have in place, you can volunteer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, volunteering is definitely a good experience. Um, and I definitely recommend, like, if you have spare time, to just do it and kind of give back to your local community in some way. Uh, definitely. And also, there's lots of free training tools as well um, uh, that comes with it that will help you to get other opportunities. So I got um level two youth worker qualification because of volunteering. Yeah, I know. So we had committee training on the committee. So there was some that was about events planning, there was some that was kind of how to withdraw like funds from the society bank accounts and things. Um, I did a look after your mate training, which mm. is kind of all about mental health and it like how to spot if your friend is going through something and kind of how to talk to them about it and where you can signpost them and stuff. And I wouldn't have got that training if I hadn't have done like the volunteering that I did. So it's definitely it's beneficial. So yeah, so in total, for why should why should get involved with societies? You've got uh, positive impact, skills development, for often lots of free training opportunities. Um, you've got uh, building a community. Uh, you've got your own reasons in terms of reducing your own isolation. There's so many reasons, and there's so many different ways. Even if you've only got a few hours, I volunteered for a, a year doing just two hours a week. And if you can't spare that, what about one hour and so on, or one hour every other week and so on. 
any a small amount can help if you can't fit it in. So yeah, do consider volunteering. Uh, and also placements as well. So the final question I've got for you about volunteering is what advice do you have for any student who wants to volunteer whilst at university? I would say go for it. Just find an opportunity that you're interested in or you can relate to somehow and just get involved. Get out of your comfort zone a little bit if you're umming and ahhing about doing it because you'll grow, you will love it and you won't regret doing it. I know that me being on the business society committee has honestly just made my university experience even better than it was before and i've loved every second of it and i would do it all over again yep i think that's amazing advice and i would say exactly the same i would say just do it if you can fit it in then go for it if you can't it's the way you can and yeah. then try right. <laughs> and if you don't know where to start start by speaking to the careers team and the volunteer team there as well. Um, and then that's a starting point and just speak to them what you're interested in and they'll help you from there. So yeah, lots of ways to get involved with volunteering. So I have one last question for you, which is some, a question that I ask every single person who comes on this podcast. And that question is, what advice do you have for someone who wants to find success whilst they're studying? I think if you want to find success, get involved with as much as you can um, just learn from everything, use any rejections you've got, build on them, use them to your kind of future applications. Just kind of just get out of your comfort zone a little bit. It doesn't have to be a mu like much, just push yourself a little bit so that you keep growing and just, yeah, get out there, get involved and learn from your experiences and the people around you. And that definitely seems to be a key message from today. Get out of your comfort zone, enter the growth zone. Thank you so much for all your advice that you've given today, Liz. I've really appreciated it. Can I add something in there? Yeah, add something in there. Yeah. If you had told me at the start of university that I would have been on multiple committees and kind of come on this podcast even, because when you messaged me about the podcast, I was umming and ahhing about whether to take it and whether to go for it and come on. And I was like, you know what? Why not? And just kind of doing things and getting involved and yeah, if you had told me at the start of my university experience that I'd have done all of this, I would have been kind of just, what are you talking about? That's not me. I don't do that. And then now I'm doing them and I've changed and I've grown. And yeah, you just need to get involved as much as you can and you'll surprise yourself with what you can do. I totally agree. And I think that placement has helped that with that mindset as well, because that seemed to be the catalyst for the decision to uh, join the business society. So yeah, thank you so much for all your time and advice today, Liz. I'm sure you've helped inspire students as much as you've helped to inspire me as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks again to Liz for sharing her experiences from her placement and volunteering. Liz shared some excellent advice and here's some of the key highlights from that advice that I picked out. First, Liz talked about the benefits of going out on a placement and getting involved. These include gaining more confidence, developing your skills, and also gaining knowledge. Liz identified that by doing these things, not, they not only helped her in finding a graduate job, but they also helped her with her final year studies as well. The second highlight is that during the podcast, Liz talked twice about having doubts about whether she should do something before then she decided to be bold and go ahead and do it. The first time was when she was headhunted for the Business Society. Whilst Liz did not know anyone involved very well at all, she decided to be confident and overcome the initial barriers that she felt existed. Because she identified this opportunity as something that was interesting and worth trying out, Liz later revealed that this opportunity was one of the best things that she did during her time here at Derby. Therefore, you may find that actually some of the best opportunities that you could take are the ones that actually you're on the fence about whether or not you should do it or not. The final key highlight is that you can get recognised by the university for your volunteering. Liz achieved the highest level Futures Award for her volunteering and placement experiences for the time that she spent volunteering and on placement. The university recognises volunteering in different levels, so even if you find only a few hours a week or even less to do volunteering, you can look into the Futures Award to see if you can get that volunteering certified on your CV as part of an award. For more information about the Futures Award, see the link in the description. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning, and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio. 
and to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>